Welcome back, all of you great 12s. We are having fun Tracy and myself in studio. I hope you guys at home are having so much fun as well, learning with Tracy, physical science, making sure that you get everything inside your brain so that you do not lose anything when you get into that exam room. I certainly hope that you guys drink a lot of water before you go and study. And during the course of your exam preparation, you drink a whole lot of water because it helps you and it gives you a whole lot of energy. And it also makes sure what your brain is revived and you are sharp when you get into that exam room. So we are on the last segment. If you missed out, it's not so bad because Tracy is that clever. She's that brilliant teacher. <laughs> she will make sure that you understand and you get it. So I'm done talking. Tracy, the sure. brilliant one. Sure. No pressure there. <laughs> okay, great. Anyway, actually talking about studying, um, if you have to have noise, and I'm one of those, I don't like studying in complete silence yeah. and I've just written exams on my own because I'm busy improving my qualifications so I do understand this but you can't have the TV on mm -hmm. okay this is different because you're interacting with us it's like being in class you can't have the TV on in the background and you mustn't be listening to music that has words okay because your brain unconsciously will think about the words no matter what you say that oh helps me concentrate no it doesn't listening to beyonce is not not ideal. really because then you want to get up and wanna, yeah. you know I'm a girl, i shouldn't dance no man. <laughs> yeah and i shouldn't sing and then of course i'll start singing and then my animals you know it scares them but listening to classical music there's mm -hmm. actually lots of stuff online which asks, which has study music which helps you just concentrate because I don't like the silence. I get quite like, mm -hmm. ah. so I had some albums that were just playing on repeat. My cat heard the same songs over and over again. Then you have to put them on shuffle so you don't hear them in the same order. <laughs> anyway, and then you can, you sort of zone them out, but it helps you concentrate, okay? okay. So, moving on, all these things we do. So, Tobani, you sent in such a nice question. And when I first looked at it, I went, oh, I don't want to do a gazy calculation. And then I read it and went, oh, actually, this is a nice question. So it says to us, seven moles of N2 and two moles of O2 are placed in a two decimeter cubed container. So I've got seven moles and two moles, and my container is two decimeters cubed. May or may not be important. I'm keeping it there. Container is sealed, and the following equilibrium is established. Usually, when we see a question starting like this, it probably means I'm going to need to calculate Kc. And then my heart sank because the next part went, the Kc value for this reaction is 4,8. I went, no, I don't like these Kc values because they are horrible. But it got better because now it says, what information does this Kc value indicate with regards to the amount of NO in the equilibrium mixture? I'm going, oh, that's not so bad. Now remember, as a memory guide, we remember that Kc is found by finding the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So if we have a Kc value greater than 1, which is what this is, it means that we have a lot of product in the equilibrium system. Okay, so this particular thing tells me that the concentration of the NO is greater then the concentration of the N2 and the concentration of the O2. It means we have a lot of product in the equilibrium system and very little reactant. That's all it means. If this value was less than 1, can't be negative, okay, cannot be negative. So if it's less than 1, then it means we have a lot of reactant and very little product. But that's all it means. It means that the equilibrium has gone, we say that it's gone far to the right and we have lots of product, okay? Now, this is nice. This question now says, the temperature is increased to 100 degrees, but the Kc value increases to 48. Number one, only temperature can change Kc value. Number two, by increasing the temperature, I've increased the Kc value. That means I favored the forward reaction. What this implies, without it being told, is that my delta H was actually greater than naught. My forward reaction was endothermic. Okay? So what uses Shackley is to explain why the Kc value increased? Well, the forward reaction is endothermic, and increasing temperature will always favor the endothermic reaction. Therefore, I'll get more products, 
and the KC value will increase. Okay, so it's really not so bad, but the big thing here is to remember that KC can only change, your equilibrium constant only changes with temperature. No matter what else they do, the system readjusts itself so that it gets the same KC value. It's because of the energy that, in, that temperature, the way temperature changes energy and all sorts of things and can break and make bonds that this is, that this happens. Okay, so that brings us to the exam question. Okay, I'm hoping, hoping you guys have tried it. Okay, so let's do the exam question. All right, you ready? All right, mm -hmm. let's go. So, my favorite section. We have a circuit. In the circuit below, the battery has an EMF of 15. Okay, actually, it has an EMF of 12. We're going to go back to 12. We're going to leave with the circuit, okay? And an internal resistor R. The three resistors and the bulb are connected as shown in the diagram. The resistance of the bulb is 2 ohms. Initially, both switches are open. Assume that all the connecting wires and meter have negligible resistance. Oops, there we go. So... With only switch 1 closed, the reading on the voltmeter drops to 10,8 volts. Calculate the internal resistance of the battery. So, let's go with the fact that all the information is actually given on my diagram, as it says. Switch S1 gets closed. Now, if any of you have ever seen me do electricity, you know that what I like to do, really, the white screen does not like. Okay, I'm going to pretend I'm left-handed. And go like this. Okay. Really? Okay. So, if I do this, there we go, as long as I can see. S gets closed. Now, this is what happens. We get this. We have a series circuit. Two resistors in series. That's great. Well, yay, nice and easy. We want internal resistance. So, when you look at this, the first thing you should say to yourselves is, can I do EMF equals I R plus R? Well, I could try, because I know the EMF. We're going to use the EMF on the, on the diagram, which is 12. R is easy enough to work out, because my R is going to be R total, which means from this, it's R1 and R2. So I'm going to go R1 plus R2, and that's 6 plus 6, which is 12 ohms, so that's fine. So I've got this, I've got this. Oh dear, I have two unknowns. Okay, so, ah, but can I work out I? Absolutely. I have that 10,8. You need to recognize that that is your external voltage. Okay, why am I doing that? Because external voltage is related to my total external resistance. This is, that R is actually external, not really total. So now watch. My external resistance is equal to my external voltage divided by my total current. Okay, we're going to call this RT. That's 12. This is 10,8. Okay, so that means I'm going to go IT. Now, I've actually done all of this. I'm not going to show you it on the calculator because I'm, I'm just a little worried I'm going to run out of time. And this is 0, 0,9 amps. Ah, so now I know I. Okay, so there's more than one way we can do this. Let's do it using that equation. So my EMF, so we're going to go EMF is I R plus little r. Okay, so EMF was 12, I was 0,9, R was 6, okay, and we want little r. So what I would do first here is I would actually divide by 0,9 on both sides. I did this a different way in my notes, but it doesn't matter. Um, 0.9, so we get 13,33, okay, equal to 6, no, I've done not 6, it's 12. Hopefully somebody was shouting at the TV, going, Tracy, you've been an idiot. I was shouting in my heart. Were you? Yes. Okay. Got to shout louder next time. I'll try. So it's 12 plus R, <laughs> so R equals 1,33 ohms. Yay! We're all happy, very excited. That's the internal resistance a bit high, but it's okay. 
we're not going to get too stressed. If I'd got 13,33, I'd be going, oh, something's gone wrong. But 1,33 ohms, not a problem. This question for the next part relies on you remembering that internal resistance is constant. Doesn't change. Okay? Very, very important. Now, I love the next question. Now they say to you, so there's my diagram. If both switches, S1 and S2, are closed, the ammeter now reads 1,19 amps. Okay? Internal resistance, 1,33 volts. EMF, still 12. Now watch what happens. If I now close both my switches, this is what happens to my circuit. I now have a series part and I have a parallel part. Now I use two different colors because my current splits. They want, the question asks, calculate the power dissipated by the light bulb. Yeah. So now we go, well, power is V times I. It's I squared R, and it's V squared over R. So, I know R, okay? I need to either find V or I, okay? Or both. But, doesn't really matter, but I need to find them. Finding, in order to find V, I actually need to find I, okay? So, what I need is I need to know the current that's in my green part. So now we look at this and we go, ooh, okay, so the current has changed and the current's going to split. At this point, you are welcome to use ratios, okay, because that is 6, that is 5, and so the current's going to split in a 5 to 6 ratio, but my total is 1,19 amps. Absolute disaster trying to use ratios, so let's not. However... If I can find the voltage in parallel, then I can find the current in that little section. Okay, so watch. This is what we're going to do. R parallel is my voltage in parallel divided by my current. I don't have R parallel, so I'm going to work it out. It's going to be, and in this case it's R2, 1 over R2, plus... 1 over R3 plus R4. Now I add the R3 and the R4 together because they're in series. So this gives me 1 over 6 over 2 plus 3. I'm showing you all the maths. 1 over 6 plus 1 over 5. Now our calculators these days are wonderful. So watch if I go 1 divided by 6 plus 1 divided by 5. Okay, I'm going to put it into, into math mode because then you'll see... Okay, 1 divided by 6 plus 1 divided by 5, 5 gives me 11 over 30, okay, but that's 1 over R parallel, so therefore R parallel is 30 over 11, which is 2,73. Please change it to a fraction, okay, so 2,73, so this is 2,73. I want V parallel, I know the total current is 1,19, it's not a nice number, so watch, I'm going to go 2.73 times 1.19, and it's 3,2487, so let's make it 3,25, okay, the voltage over the whole green section is the parallel, now, if I use that parallel, remember parallel voltage is the same everywhere. So, that also has the same voltage, the 6 ohm and the 5 and the 6 together. So, now watch what we can do. Okay, so, if I go, because we want the second part. So, if I go R in series, which is R1 plus R3 plus R4, is going to be my parallel plus my current in that little series section, okay, so that means I'm going to take 5, this is 3, 2, no, 3, what was it, 3, it is 3, 2, 5, really, 3, 2, 5, yes, 3, 2, 5, we want the current, so current is going to be 3.25 divided by 5, okay, not, not, 6, 5 amps. So, 
what have I done in this very long roundabout way? This was with lots of marks, by the way. Is I've worked out that the current here is 0, 0,65 amps. So now I look back and I go, hang on, wait. I know the current, yay. I know the resistance, even yay. I don't think it's a word, but let's just go with it. I teach science for a reason. So the power in the light bulb is the current squared times R, where my current is 0, 0,65 squared times R, which was three, no, was two actually, not three, it was two, okay, all right, so now we do this, and we go, well, 0 0.65 squared times two gives me 0 0.85, That's a lot of work. Doesn't matter. It's great. Guys, there's nothing to say you can't get given a question like this. Please also realize here, grade 12, that there's always more than one way to do these questions. This is just one way of getting there. There are lots of ways around this, okay? If any way around this, especially in terms of getting to that current, you've got to you'll still get all the marks as long as you show everything that you're doing. Okay, it's very, very important. Oh, no. Where did it go? So, last question. Nat says to you, let's move this again. What effect will the closing of both switches have on the voltmeter reading? This is such an important question because you know that your, your current went, your current in the first was 0,9, now it's 1,19 amps, okay? Your current increased. Your internal resistance, your internal voltage will increase as well. So the last volts will get bigger, so V external gets smaller, okay? V internal increases because current increased, so V external will decrease because of the increase in V in external because... Your EMF is your external plus your internal, and your internal increased, so your external must decrease so that this stays the same. Look at my pretty things, everywhere. hopefully that makes sense. And we're about to run out of time, so grade 12s, thank you so much. Study hard for the rest of your exams. Mm -hmm. There's going to be lots of science shows up soon. Yay, very excited. And I will see you guys next time. Wow, thank you so much, Tracy, for coming through. You have been a great assistant, and I hope the learners at home, you are listening to Tracy, and I hope that you guys are actually taking in each and every single thing that she has been telling you into consideration and make sure that you nail those exams come the physical science part, whether it's chemistry, whether it is the physical, make sure that it is all on point. Well, from myself, from Tracy, from everybody in the studio, bye for now. Thank you.